Hey everyone, welcome back to Armor City. Today I am working on nothing in particular, uh, but something pretty important. I am adding one more island to the list of islands that is more or less finished, so there's a lot of work to do. Uh, but I guess my only problem with that is that there's no short, snappy thing that's being built. There is no interesting marina or beach or anything that could make this episode thematically revolve around anything. I'm just expanding the city and building really what you could call the meat of the city. Uh, so there's nothing really that interesting to the time lapse, but at the same time it's very important and I want to get this done because it's really the body of the city. So you might wonder, uh, well, am I going to talk about what I'm doing all the time or am I just going to randomly rant about stuff and ignore the time lapse for that reason? Well, kind of both. I do want to talk about what is happening in the time lapse every now and then because I still think there are some small interesting uh, things going on. One thing which actually I discovered in this episode is that you can stack buildings and uh, go beyond what we've done so far and intersect buildings using the Rico mod and sharp angles um, and actually use the move it mod to move up buildings and stack floors on each other and kind of create your own custom things that way which I think is very interesting. Um, so there are some interesting things being done and I'll definitely kind of comment on it. The only issue is that a lot of the things that I'm doing very much mimic the things that I've done in the city so far because I just need to place a lot of buildings and lay out a large part of the city but keep it within the same style of the city so far so there's a lot of uh, detailing with decals and trees in a way that I've done before a lot of making road layouts etc in a way that I've done before and a lot of placing buildings that I've done before hell uh, buildings that I've placed before so there's quite a bit of repetition in there so I also want to talk a bit about my entire idea behind why I'm building this city. Because I think it's something that I've continuously kind of talked about and uh, kind of subtly hinted at in many of the episodes, but I've never really given a detailed kind of explanation as to why I'm building this city this way and why I'm basically doing anything, everything, in a way that you're not supposed to in this game and uh, in a way that before I started working on this I didn't really see so much in this way. Basically what it boils down to is um, that I'm trying to make a city of course which is more or less more of an ideal city than a realistic city. It's not based on anything in real life and it is definitely not like uh, the cities in Bahrain or uh, take for instance Dubai or uh, Qatar, Doha, uh, that you see in real life. It's definitely not like anything like that. It's very fantasy and it's very much just taking ideas and trying them out on the palette that is this game. Um, that doesn't make sense. Uh, trying them out on like the canvas that is this game, if you will. Um, and it's exactly there where I feel that a lot of the times that this game is being played, it's kind of being played in a way that uh, I'm not so much a fan of anymore and that sounds very harsh and don't get me wrong I love all of the cities that are being built and I think I'm very far from the best in this game um, but the thing is a lot of the cities that are being built in this game no matter how well they're built and no matter how detailed they are and no matter how much insight goes into them are cities that if you were to build them or if you were to see them in real life would be cities with a lot of issues um, a lot of the people in this game are building cities in ways that cities are just not built anymore with issues that shouldn't exist anymore. Uh, so for instance, it's very popular to have highways around the downtowns of your cities, even going through the downtowns of the cities, highways everywhere, uh, be it elevated or regular or uh, sunken. Uh, they're a super popular thing in the game, whereas in real life, there's something that cities are trying to remove and cities are trying to get off the very car-centric and uh, highway-focused uh, kind of layouts that became popular halfway through the last century but nowadays is found to just make cities less livable and, um, well, it's pretty much one big uh, car manufacturer PR campaign. And I think that's very interesting. In real life, cities are trying to get 
rid of their highways and many current planned cities are trying to find ways around that, uh, go for a shared space, trying to uh, focus on public transit, uh, have more cycling, trying to make places more livable. And in city skylines, people are still building cities the way that they used to be and that people are trying to fix nowadays. And don't get me wrong, I still love many of these cities and hell, I've even had one of these very much realism focused and not so much ideology focused, I guess, uh, city myself with my Dutch project, which has pretty much been my introduction into this game properly. Um, and I definitely like it. I just think it's uh, a bit constricting in a sense that you can do anything with this game. You can take any of the assets and use them in so many different ways beyond just trying to recreate a style that you see in real life that I think it's so interesting to try and pick up this game to see what kind of fantasies you have about city design in, the, in general, what kind of experiments you would like to run on making a city, uh, how you would, I, I don't know, in the example of Amar City, make a city that is like bus lines everywhere and has more bus lines than regular roads or trying to create a city without any cars. Just interesting ideas that uh, you might otherwise only just brainstorm about that this game is really the first ever game that you can try them in. And I, I do know that many people have done this uh, before me in this similar kind of sense. If you don't know him yet, Yuto has got an amazing series um, which is just, you know, kind of city of the future uh, kind of idea. And the same goes for, um, if I remember the name, uh, Dr. Com, who has Project 2100, which is uh, very similar. They're both kind of cities in the future that try to step beyond what makes some of the cities today um, less good in certain ways and uh, try to come up with ideas on how to make a great city in the future. Which I think is super interesting because my main complaints just with much of the game is that it's so very much focused on things that in real life just don't work and in that I almost feel that it is, it is glorifying things uh, which shouldn't be glorified. Maybe that's a, a bit of a harsh way to put it but basically I want to make something different and something that a kind of city where I would like to live, a kind of city where I just kind of think, how would I do things and put that into the city instead of looking at existing cities and uh, asking myself, how do they do things and copy that in the game. Just general food for thought. That's basically what I'm doing in my city. And I could talk about that for quite a while and my rents would probably get increasingly more like a stream of consciousness and increasingly less organized. Uh, so I don't want to do that for too long, but I've sort of seen the similar kind of thing in some of the comments. One of the comments that I haven't talked about so far, um, but that I kind of thought was very interesting, was on one of my videos, I was uh, very critical of the use of cars, I guess. Well, I was probably just talking about my bus lanes and trying to uh, minimize car usage as much as I can, which is... You know, doesn't mean that I think cars are the worst thing ever. Of course I love them. Um, but they could definitely be used a little bit less in cities. Actually, as 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 someone said in a podcast that I re-listened recently, um, Brent Todirian, if I remember correctly, an urban planner from Vancouver, streets aren't just traffic sewers to move cars. They're the heart of civic life in the city. And that's kind of what I want to get back to with this city as well. And... Uh, for that reason, trying to make uh, the streets carless. Also, it just allows me to make the streets a bit more narrow, which um, is, is, I guess, one step in the direction of making a city uh, pedestrian-friendly with a climate like this, which is very hot. But anyway, um, yeah, that happened. And the interesting response was, you know, cars sort of signify freedom. They're the freedom to go wherever you want to, whenever you want to, and um, to have something at your disposal that kind of just makes you seem mobile wherever you want to go and not have to rely on anybody else. Uh, which I think is very interesting, but it's also kind of a PR 
fueled kind of notion because the way I view it is um, sure there is a bit of freedom to cars but where does that freedom go if you're stuck in a traffic jam for hours where does that freedom go if it actually makes you less mobile um, than if there were actually good public transit and that doesn't mean that I disagree with the notion completely it's just the kind of idea that's very deeply rooted into Western culture uh, to rely on cars and see it as a personal mode of transport and I guess especially in America uh, though I don't want to start becoming too uh, prejudiced about this I guess especially in America it's, it's a kind of notion which is very valued almost culturally and in your identity as something for freedom whereas in reality it can be very constricting as well. I think there's a right time and place for everything, or I guess that's that's Professor Oak. But um, I kind of got into that discussion because I, I thought it was an example of how a certain way of thinking can actually restrict you. Um, and if you step off from that view that your car is freedom and your way to be mobile and just see it as just another form of transport beyond your legs, I guess, or a bicycle, or public transit, uh, that you might see things a little bit differently. And that's why I think kind of applies to um, this game as well. And I think there was just a point where I was building uh, the Netherlands and trying to keep everything as realistic as possible and trying to copy everything um, that I, I just kind of figured, well, if I look beyond the way that is and look beyond the way that I just accepted things should be, I don't know, I could come up with some new things, come up with some new ideas. They might not be good, but it might be some creative, interesting experiments in making cities. And that's what I think is very interesting in a game like this. Of course, it's all just opinion, uh, but more or less um, the point that I also just wanted to make is that um, I, just, I just find it so interesting how people are creating cities that would be objectively bad in real life, but make them in such a way that they're so beautiful and admired in this game. It's it's weird. Anyway, um, that's Almar City for you, I guess. It's, it's a weird experiment, and there are definitely some things where I'll definitely have to criticize it as well, and I'm probably also getting better while I'm building the city itself, and if that isn't the case, I should probably get mad at myself. Um, but it's it's very much fantasy. So at once, don't take it too seriously and don't see certain things that I'm doing as completely unrealistic and therefore something that I shouldn't do. But I'm still super happy with any feedback that I get and any ways in which I can improve, be it in the game or in the city itself. One of the biggest things, of course, being that my earlier streets were just way too wide for the climate and... Um, what I think I should in instead do is focus on those narrow streets, keep it at least doable for the climate. Same goes for trees, which do kind of cool off the temperature, and the same goes for the water as well. Uh, there was actually a very interesting way in which Mustar City, which I very shortly mentioned in earlier videos, but Mustar City is a sustainable development in Abu Dhabi. And there's this interesting wind tower that it has, which uses wind tower technology from pretty much old Middle Eastern architecture. And it, it basically consists of a big complex of buildings with in the middle a sort of plaza. And in the middle of that is a giant wind tower, which uh, sucks in air uh, from the top, cools it and sort of like blows it over the plaza. And because of that, it's a lot cooler right there than in the entire surrounding area, which I think is one of those interesting ways in which you can actually get around the climate here. What's interesting though is that these wind towers were also used a lot just in old um, Middle Eastern architecture and they have some of the greatest ways to cool down buildings without using any electricity whatsoever, using these wind towers but also uh, using streams of water uh, that come down from like aquifers or aquifiers, I'm not sure, uh, from other areas. And um, they've all sort of been replaced by air conditioner units and cars and roads and everything, which just doesn't really work as well in modern technology. 
It's very similar to how some of the European city centers, which have developed over many centuries with trial and error and randomness, are now much more valued than American city centers, which struggle with parking lots and empty vacant lots and all kinds of issues compared to the very popular tourist destinations that European cities provide and usually also more livable areas in the centers at least. It's kind of uh, something that I gave a thought very recently is that um, we definitely did have better insight about city development in recent years and things are still getting better. Hell, in 50 years, people are probably going to laugh at the way that cities are being built nowadays. Um, so you can definitely see that people are just getting better at designing cities and designing everything in cities. But interestingly, planned cities, I don't think they really work that well, or at least they rarely do. And what you see with many of the planned cities, especially recently, is that as well as they may be planned with all kinds of uh, ideas behind it and everything calculated to make them as good as they can be, a lot of the cities that have just grown organically over centuries in a very messy way, in a way that you would think isn't thought about whatsoever, have grown to be much more uh, and better cities. And this is also why I believe uh, that planned cities might not be the best thing ever. Um, because in the end, a city is also kind of a social thing. And it's something which takes some trial and error to get right. It's, it's not just the stone that you make it out of, it's also the people that live in it. And when you plan a city, you can plan every single thing, every small stone and every detail inside the city but you can't actually plan what everybody's life inside the city is going to be and i guess in that sense existing cities just work much better um, because they've just grown over a natural selection kind of process over the years and with a lot of trial and error and um, planned cities i think can be great to get ideas on how to tackle some of the issues that cities face and as a way to experiment with those but I don't think they can really ever make for the best city to exist which is kind of a weird thing to be saying I guess while I'm building a planned city in city skylines but that's also the idea behind Elmer City it's really a bit of an experiment in some of the ways that I'm building the city I don't think this would be the perfect city and um, this doesn't end up being the city that I would love to live in actually even though that's the goal that I set out with but it's an interesting experiment to try and mess around with the weird round um, light rail system and the weird bus roads everywhere and figuring out how you can lay out a city in the Middle East in that ridiculous climate and actually make it somehow livable, maybe. But in the end, I don't really believe I'm building the best city ever here. Anyway, I, uh, I think I promised to get back into the details, so I guess I'll do that very quickly. I, I've talked about the building that I stacked earlier, which is the building that I placed right next to the tallest building, um, but I actually wanted to do it over here as well, so that's kind of relevant here. It's basically you just use the Move It uh, mod and use Page up and down. The only thing you kind of have to worry about is that it also does raise the land a little bit, so you have to be somewhat careful with it. But with this building in particular, I was looking for a nice sort of L-shaped profile to the building and a nice base with a couple of floors to be alongside the tower. And none of the buildings that I tried kind of fit it. And I wasn't really happy with uh, the way that it looks with a very flat building. So in the end, this building kind of works out very nicely, stacking two copies of it on top of each other. Uh, to just add some extra height to it. And I don't think it can work in most situations. Like this is a very a very low building, which is kind of why it works out and why the terraforming didn't become an issue after all. But it's something which is quite interesting. And I didn't really give it a thought before, but you can definitely also sink buildings into the ground and cover that up a little bit to get rid of maybe some of the lower details of buildings that you don't want to have or kind of change the shape of it. It's it's one of the things which I think is very interesting about the game and what we can actually do with all of the mods nowadays. So that's something I very quickly did and then many of the neighborhoods around here are just very simple residential kind of 
neighborhoods that I've gotten to before. I have actually kind of looked at some stuff in uh, Dubai as well, what, what like the, the suburbs are like over there. Um, and they do actually have some relatively small homes, though there are also large <laughs> sort of American-ish suburbs with enormous mansions and the like. But there are also some small houses and I found this super interesting thread somewhere and I can't for the life of me find it anymore, which I'm kind of mad about, which was about this this person who had a home with a small garden, which was just sand because it's Dubai, and had some turf and tried to grow some grass on it. And it's one of the most interesting things I've seen on the internet for a while. And it's just, it's just a slideshow with text on imager with all kinds uh, of, you know, stuff about the grass growing there and what it looked like in the end. But that did give a very nice idea of what these houses were like. And I figured I could take that idea, maybe make it a bit more compact and throw some inspiration from Dutch row house neighborhoods in there and make those sort of the suburbs of the city. I don't have any real suburbs of the city since there won't be any neighborhoods that are outside the main areas of the city. Um, precisely because they go against the point of the city. With many of suburbs, you have to get in your car and get on the highway and drive to the city center. And I feel like these areas, these small suburbs which I have on the island are still close enough to the center uh, to just uh, not have to use your car for it. And also have a sort of sub city center near them. So in that sense, they're not too suburby. Um, but I won't have any real suburbs, exactly because I don't think that works too well. But these row houses that I do have, um, they are very densely packed together, but they do still have a garden and they should hopefully be a way to also have the life of families. Because as much as I, um, I guess I do subscribe to the views of the hipsters who go to coffee box and uh, live in condos in Vancouver and want to remove suburbs everywhere. I guess as much as I do kind of subscribe to that view, there is just no way that you cannot have suburbs. And... Um, I think they're antagonized too much because many of the existing ones uh, just don't work that well. Because, But I do think that there are great suburbs out there and they're a necessary thing because you do want to have a place where you can just raise a family and have a dog and actually have children be able to play and go to school and go to everywhere. And there's no way, or at least that is just not easy when you live in a condo somewhere up high in a city center and when you live in a very densely urban area you can be fine as any kind of liberal young urban professional, but you don't want to generally raise a middle class kind of regular normal family in that kind of place. So there will be just, you know, some of these row houses, but still they are quite compact in a sense that row houses in the Netherlands are quite compact. Um, since, of course, I do want to make things as dense as possible and I still do want to make all of the facilities that you want to have at least within walking distance or within public transit distance, if that's a thing, uh, from the place where you live. So that's, that's where I guess I took a lot of Dutch inspiration, which is probably very visible in the city in general. It's something that I find is very hard for me to get rid of. I don't know, I just personally quite like the Dutch suburbs, uh, because if you're not familiar with them, um, I basically live in one of them, but... Um, they're very large stretches of row houses and that's basically it. There are just family homes, uh, some semi-detached or detached houses as well, um, but they fit in actually quite dense and small areas without feeling like they're too dense and too urban, I feel like. They're still very quiet areas, uh, but at the same time, they don't really feel like they're wasting too much space, which is kind of a forced thing in the Netherlands since it's such a small country with such a high population density that you more or less have to do it that way. Um, but it's it's a kind of model which I figured uh, something inspired by that could work quite well in the city over here since I do need the suburbs anyway, but I don't have a lot of space to work with. The only thing that I'm starting to grow a little bit concerned about is really the amount of different buildings that I can use to build these. Because as you can see, I just keep having to place the same kind of buildings and there are definitely slowly uh, new buildings rolling out from the workshop, which are absolutely amazing. I cannot thank the creators enough because so much of how cities look 
in YouTube series or in anything else. Like most of it just comes down to the people who make the assets and who make the mods, um, not just me. But basically, I am kind of running out of the different kind of buildings that I could make these small houses out of. So they are going to grow a little bit repetitive, but I'll see. Uh, whatever I can pop up on the workshop and add some more variation to these buildings will be nice. Uh, but if I can't find that, then much of these suburbs are just going to look very similar. Which I guess is realistic, but you know, I, I do want to have a bit of diversity in the city as well. Uh, also, what's quite interesting actually, something that I didn't really talk about before, is that I am keeping sight lines in check quite a bit with this city. I'll talk a bit more about this when I can actually get a better overview of the city when it's a bit more finished. Uh, but the places that I'm building high-rise in are actually somewhat strategic as well. There aren't too many large high-rise buildings or skyscrapers, if you will, inside the city. Uh, but the places where they are, they're quite sparse and sort of strategically placed. Uh, so we obviously we have the downtown of the city with many of the roads that come into the city or that uh, run through the most important parts of the city actually go directly towards the downtown. So as you're driving on those important roads, you can actually see the skyscrapers of the downtown looming up in the distance. So that's quite nice. Um, but also, there are some other places where I wanted to have some high-rise. Much of the high-rise around the city is actually centered around uh, the coastline. Uh, so quite a lot are along the uh, beach boulevard, but also along uh, the entry, the water entry, I guess, of the city, where I have the only bridge that is high enough to let boats uh, to let boats pass underneath it. And those are the kinds of places where I wanted to have high rise as well. For one, because it makes the skyline look a bit better, but also because they're obviously places where you have the best view and where you want to have high rises. Uh, but also because they're the places where the, the tall buildings stand out the most, where you can see them most visibly as you're walking on the streets or driving over the roads or uh, sitting inside the light rail. They're some of the most visible places and that's kind of why I wanted to accent them with some high rises. And the same also kind of goes for a few of the corners. Like I have some flats around the corners of the islands, just to kind of mark, you know, here's, here's the one island starting. This is kind of the end of this and where all the high rise kind of meet alongside the lakes and the canals in the middle of the city. And um, yeah, that's just one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting and uh, something which is probably quite clear in this episode with me building those couple of flats alongside um, the entrance in the city when it comes to the water, that large canal of water alongside the middle of the city and also the edge of the island that I'm working on right now. Sight lines is something which is very important actually, especially when it comes to uh, making any kind of downtown or uh, skyscraper cluster. One of the interesting things that I always found um, would be a pretty funny thing to share as trivia is that sight lines in many cities are actually officially noted as well. So there are many lines inside cities uh, where buildings are not allowed to be built or where buildings are not allowed to be built beyond a certain height or shape. Uh, because they would take away view of something. I remember a capital somewhere in the United States has some sight lines going around it from uh, different hills and different important places. And you can tell that exactly in those sight lines is where no high rises are being built. And either at the end of those sight lines or just alongside those sight lines, uh, high rises are being built. And um, where it counts the most, I think, is London where St. Paul's Cathedral has some sight lines that uh, protects its view so that when you look at St. Paul's Cathedral from some of the major roads and places in London, there is never a building that is blocking your view from St. Paul's Cathedral because by sight lines, buildings are not allowed to be built beyond a certain height at those points. And so there's the cheese grater in uh, London, which is a weirdly diagonal building. Um, and apparently it actually also has that weird diagonal shape which kind of is shaped as if it's moving backward uh, because it is standing on the middle of a sight line to St. Paul's Cathedral. So it has a diagonal slope to its building which is just narrowly avoiding uh, taking away the site from St. Paul's Cathedral. 
which is very interesting. And it's the, it's the similar kind of thing which I wanted to do with the downtown as well. So the downtown um, building, which I believe is the Chelsea building, the giant building that looks like, well, that looks like, uh, what is it again? A bottle opener. The giant building that looks like a bottle opener is kind of where I'm saving all of my sightlines from and I'm trying to make it as visible as I can from all of the major roads and places in the city while at the same time uh, trying to not build any high rise in the way of those sightlines. So that's something which I'll definitely talk about and actually show in game beyond just talking about it in some of the future episodes but it's something which I just very quickly wanted to mention in here. Anyway, that is just about it for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching and hopefully I'll be back again next time with some more on-topic talk about what I'm doing in the city itself and some interesting things as well because there are still some interesting things that I'm planning like the power plants and an airport uh, that I'll still get to that I'll get their own thematic episodes. Uh, but for now, this is all I can leave you guys with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.